Welcome back, and uh, let's have another opinion now on this uh, very controversial issue, if you like. Uh, I'm now being joined on the program by uh, Timothy Olawale, who is the Director General of uh, the Nigeria Cons uh, Employers Consultative Association, NECA. Thank you very much, Mr. Olawale, for joining us on the program. Now, I'm, I'm aware that your group is against the directive issued by the President. Tell me exactly what you have against it. Okay. I will not say that uh, we are totally against what the president has said with regards to his directive on uh, the restriction of forex for the importation of food. Because we know what, is, what it meant and that it meant well for Nigeria. Because the, the aim and objective, according to him, is to conserve forex for Nigeria that can be channeled to other productive uh, area. Exactly. Like for instance, the production or uh, provision of uh, infrastructural facilities for the country. However, our position is that whereas it is desirable, the assumption that Nigeria has, has reached sufficiency for food production is not correct. We are not yet self-sufficient when it comes to the issue of food production. Nigeria does not have capacity now to feed itself adequately. And if that is so, just like Nigeria, and I usually give an analogy, just like it is desirable that government should conserve forex for Instead of importing fuel, government could as well say they want to stop a restricted allocation of forex for importation of fuel and be self-reliant on refining crude in Nigeria. But the truth is that we don't have the capacity to meet local consumption. And the same goes for the food aspect of our economy, that we presently don't have capacity to deliver on food that is necessary to even fill the hundreds of millions of Nigerians. I understand your point, but, but how do you reconcile your position now with that of farmers? And we've seen quite a lot of farmers come out to say, look, uh, they, they, they produce a lot, but the, the problem is that the, the market is not absorbing them because they face very stiff competition from cheap foreign imports. So the, the, the capacity for them, the capacity is there. Uh, we'll take rice, for instance, that they have the capacity, yes. but that you have these cheap imports that are coming in, you know, that are making it difficult for, for, for these local farmers, making it difficult for the local products now to compete in the market. Well, you are correct. We have that issue, and it's part of the global and general problems that we are saying government should address. And the problem with that, basically, is not the issue of, oh, we have competing brands from a foreign market. It's the issue of smuggling and dumping. Our, our borders are so porous, and it has defied security solution. Government needs to reinvent itself on how to police our borders so that all this, even our, our neighboring country like uh, Benin Republic, do you know how many tons and tons of rice comes in through that border? In other words, these are critical issues that must be addressed. And beyond even that, look at the issue of palm oil. What is being produced locally in Benin Republic is not even sufficient. It's more than what they can consume. Yet, what comes in from Benin Republic? Thousands of metric tons. If I knew we were going to have this discussion, I would have gotten those facts. Thousands of metric tons that are dumped there from other countries find their way into Nigerian market and also are dealing hard blows on Nigerian production of uh, palm oil. The same thing from Ghana. So Nigeria is a dumping ground for all these excess imports
from the different countries. And that also speaks to the question you have asked with regards to the issue of uh, African Free Continental Trade Agreement that we have signed. If we don't deal with most of these issues, you discover that Nigeria will ultimately become a dumping ground. You know the relationship between France and all these neighboring uh, Francophone countries. Easily, France can bring in goods to all those countries. That's, that's for sure. And because of the, uh, because of the trade relations or agreement that we have in Africa now, all those goods will come at cheap prices and find their way into Nigerian uh, markets. What we are saying is that there are lots and lots of things that government needs to do. Not, gov not only government, we together, in collaboration with government, needs to do to strategically position our businesses to be competitive so that we can derive full benefit, optimal advantage from the African Free Continental Trade Agreement. And of course, the, the hope is that, uh, because you did talk about uh, the relationship between France and other Francophone countries and the possibility of France yes. now uh, pushing in goods through these Francophone African countries. But th that's the reason why you have oh. the, the rules of origin now in, in that agreement and talking about uh, the Continental Free Trade Agreement. So, so hopefully that rules of origin the, would be applied. The problem we have in Nigeria is not the absence of rules. It's not that we are bereft of policies. It is the problem of implementation. You know, I just gave instances of our poor well, borders. In, in terms of implementation, we have the customs, now, it, it wouldn't be just up to outfits. Nigeria anyway, because I'm talking about the Continental Free Trade Agreement. It, it would be up I to know, the continent. But much, but much depends on us. Yeah. If you do not enforce your rights, nobody will enforce it for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Due diligence must be done on our own part to ensure that other parties play their own part. But if we, because of our self-interest and individual interest, we, de we decide not to do what is right in the interest of the nation, we all suffer the consequences. But ultimately... But what we are saying generally, generally with regards to this issue of a ban on forex for uh, food importation, it's not that it's not laudable. Just as it's not expedient to withdraw forex for uh, importation of petroleum. It's not expedient to uh, withdraw forex for even health tourism and education tourism. The same way it's not expedient at this material time. It's the timing to withdraw forex for food importation. What we are saying is that government should exercise caution and do due diligence to make sure that all those variables are in place to ensure that there is no shock in the system and that we're all ready for that dispensation. And it will not happen overnight. It's a process. But what we don't like in Nigeria is we like shortcutting process. So let's follow a process that will be through consultation and engagement so that we're all happy at the end of the day and Nigeria is better for it. Mr. Timothy Olawali, Director General, Nigeria Employers Consultative Association. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. It is my pleasure. All right. We'll take a short break and I'll be right back to continue this discussion. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. Why we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, Wait. Wait. DG360. Providing clarity to issues.